四十八年前，一场突破边界的展览在纽约大都会艺术博物馆惊艳亮相，却遭到不公诽谤。这让艺术家汉斯·哈童的职业生涯在接下来的几十年里饱受挫折，逐渐淡出众人视野。五年前，法国传奇画廊家艾曼纽·贝浩登先生重拾沧海遗珠，宣布代理汉斯·哈童遗产，为他的归来铺平道路。时间来到二零二三年，贝浩登开年首展再次呈现汉斯·哈童佳作，让我们有机会回到一九七五年，重新认识这位超前艺后的现代艺术大师。To help us navigate this marvelous room of art, I have asked an expert from the gallery, Matthew McCartwell, to join us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very pleased to be sharing a little bit more information about our exhibition of Hans Hartung's work. We're here in Paris, New York, where his exhibition *Revenge* is on view until February 18th. So the show here has three floors,、um, and we've taken as our particular focus paintings from throughout the 1970s. During that time period, it was a major、uh, expansion for the artist.、Mm -hmm. You see him moving away from the more muted palettes that I would say defined his practice up till that point, bringing in a lot more chroma.、Um, but you see it throughout these pieces.、Um, there's kind of a lot of fusion happening in the works. And at the same time, in 1975, Hartung was invited by Henry Gedzeler, a contemporary curator at the Met Museum, to do a major exhibition. And it was really on the heels of,、um, you know, major moments for Hartung in Europe. He had represented France in 1960 at the Venice Biennial.、Um, he was having more and more、uh, solo exhibitions across Europe,、um, and it was starting to be noticed in the U.S. And the Met actually acquired a painting of his in 1972.、Mm -hmm. So it made sense that following, you know, the heels of all of the success and being heralded the the father of action painting, that he would have a show in the U.S. So after the exhibition opens, a noted New York art critic named Hilton Kramer comes to view the exhibition. Exhibition, and he refers to Hartung and his exhibition as one of the most minor and moribund accomplishments of the decline of the School of Paris, which was just a scathing review at the time, especially for Hartung, who was part of this school in France that includes,、um, you know, we like to think of like Georges Mathieu, Gerhard、mm -hmm. Schneider, his wife Anna Eva Bergman,、yeah. um, who are kind of noted rivals to. Some of the abstractionists working in New York at the time.、Mm -hmm. Now,、um, you know, other New York painters loved Hartung's work.、Uh, Frank Stella tried to come to his rescue,、um, <laughs> but it just wasn't enough. And and Hilton Kramer was known kind of for other scathing reviews.、Uh, he had written about like Philip Guston's work and James Rosenquist. And so, after you know making these works for the last four years and having this exceptional exhibition at the Met. It didn't kind of result in the kind of optimism and success that he was hoping for.、Mm -hmm. So he goes back to Europe and he continues having success. And he passed away in 1989. And even since then, we've worked with the the Hartung and Bergman estate for the last few years to you know help mount some really monumental shows of his work, including a retrospective at the Musée d'Art Moderne in Paris. Here, we our hope is to resurrect the spirit of those works from the 70s. And present them across all three floors of the gallery, starting on here on the third floor, where we actually have four pieces installed that were on view in this exact arrangement、mm -hmm. at the Met in 1975. So here we have a painting from 1974, which was part of the exhibition at the Met Museum. So in this piece, it's sort of twofold. First, he would take a squeegee and put kind of teeth into it. Where he would drag it across the ground of the canvas to create these beautiful grooves. So there's actually like a really strong tactility to the piece. And to aid in that even further, he would take acrylic paint and mix it with latex. So it has almost like an elasticity,、um, glossy as well, and it has this quality where it looks like it was painted, you know, almost yesterday. After that, he would start with these with the ground in this sort of like elastic latex acrylic paint. So here we have it in orange. Then he would apply dark stripes, 
and then he would go through and remove them in like a raking process mm -hmm. to reveal the orange underneath. The result is this beautiful horizon line that kind of has lots of different layers to it and levels both you know in the physical material of the paint but also in the style. There's windows and openings. Uh, the foundation's director actually shared that the shape for him mirrors some of the windows that are at the foundation in Antibes and I like to think that you know Hartung was looking out of these windows seeing that shape frame something and then that caused some kind of reaction in him and, and you see it as a result in the work. Exactly. One interesting fact I found in Hartung's painting is that he refused to give the works figurative titles but he simply named them by year and series number. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? This is rigorous, radical abstraction. Absolutely. The artist did not believe in automatism. What he believes is that everything must be precise, including the colors, the shapes, the angles, the values. Absolutely. And he decided to control the impulse into logical techniques to express emotion. Hans Hartung was the true experimenter of his time. From roller to airbrush, from canvas to cardboard, he never stopped inventing new tools and exploring new mediums. We are lucky enough to be here and see a little bit of everything on this beautifully curated wall. The works on this wall were all made on a material called Byrite cardboard, which was very popular in the 1970s to print black and white photos on mm -hmm. because of its kind of thicker, more glossy quality and that amazing white color. Um, which actually does not yellow over time. For Hartung, he loved the size of the boards and used it as a medium to experiment, to your point. Mm -hmm. So here we find works where he's using airbrush and these kind of pools of color. Um, in other works, he's using materials that he would have often used for like lithographs or screen printing. So you'll see the multi brush strokes where he would use different types of brushes or he'd refashion a brush so that it would have, you know, different widths, different depths as it absorbed the paint and then was applied onto the board. So we're very lucky to have this installation as these works have really traveled with Hartung throughout his career and throughout many of his retrospectives. Mm -hmm. Many of them have been shown in different museum shows and I love that they kind of show this uh, fast improvisational quality of wanting to try something out and just being able to go for it on this, uh, you know, this scale of a, of a canvas and, and this kind of immediacy of a applying it directly onto a board um, and then having this luminosity come, come off of the page. Definitely. The speed of execution may only take a few seconds, but it's never as simple as what we see. This is a result of a long process of his perfecting strokes and techniques. So here we're on our ground floor where we've installed works across the 1970s in sort of alcoves to kind of showcase a lot of the different experimentation that we were talking about throughout that period in Hartung's career. Mm -hmm. So here we have a suite of works from 1974 and 75. And what I love about this work is really, it really shows how much he was interested in chroma in the 70s. Mm -hmm. You know, you see these beautiful, almost like lilac grounds that are the base of the pieces. And then on top of that amazing infusion of color, he is studying, as we were talking about a little bit, the lithography, printmaking, and so he actually started taking either rollers that were used for printmaking, mm -hmm. or he would make his own new types of rollers that he would dip the acrylic paint in and then run them across the surfaces of the canvas to create these kind of amazing verticals that punctuate and create a almost rhythm to each of the pieces. And this was, of course, you know, incredibly uh, new at the time, you know. He had to really trust in his own instinct and his use of the tool. I think Hans Hartung was a fundamental figure in the history of 20th century art. His bold work is not only ahead of his time, but also continues to speak to contemporary moments. Hans Hartung's work is in the world's most prominent museum collections, including the Met, the Guggenheim, and MoMA. His highest auction record has exceeded $3 million and we are really seeing a resurgence and demand for his art. Today, he deserves to be seen with fresh eyes. Now, we will see you in the next video. If you want to see the video in the description, you can find our contact information in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.